Shalom, and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker. Revealing the Truth is broadcast live via the internet every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time from our own television studios here in Birmingham, Alabama. Our program is the media branch of Igniting a Nation Incorporated, a 501c3 ministry devoted to reaching the church with the truth of the Bible from a Jewish believer's perspective. We are a commercial-free network supported 100% by your contributions. We are committed to bringing a bold voice to a wide variety of topics presented from a biblical worldview. The live broadcast will be televised via our website at IANBN.com and archived on our YouTube channel. You can follow us at Igniting a Nation on Facebook and Twitter for the latest show updates and daily guests. Send us your comments at info at ignitinganation.com. And now for today's rant. Shalom. Spring is here and that means summer weather in Alabama is not that far behind. If you're not from Alabama, this will give you a little glimpse into what summer is like here. It's so hot and dry in Alabama that the birds have to use potholders to pull the worms out of the ground. So hot in Alabama that the trees are whistling for the dogs. So hot in Alabama that the best parking place is determined by shade instead of distance. So hot in Alabama the hot water comes out of both taps. So hot here you can make sun tea instantly. It's so hot that the temperature drops below 95 degrees Fahrenheit and you feel a little chilly. It's so hot that you realize that asphalt has a liquid stage. It's so hot in Alabama that the potatoes cook underground so all you have to do is pull one out and add butter. It's so hot in Alabama that the cows are giving evaporated milk. And it's so hot in Alabama farmers are feeding their chickens crushed ice to keep them from laying boiled eggs. It's so dry in Alabama that the Baptists are starting to baptize by sprinkling, the Methodists are using wet wipes, Presbyterians are giving rain checks, and the Catholics are praying for the wine to turn back into water. I've now been here 10 years, now call Alabama home. It's home because it was God who sent me here. When I came to the Lord, I had not been faithful in much, and God put it on my heart to be faithful in all things. His word is clear in this matter, and I was not going to be disobedient any longer. As we read from Proverbs 2 and 6, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. King Solomon writes again in Proverbs 28 and 20, A faithful man will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. Yeshua quoted in Matthew 25, 14, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and entrusts his property to them. To the one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with him. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown 
and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside, into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He goes on to say in Luke 12, 35, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning. Like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth. He will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have not, as, not let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager, whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, My master is taking a long time in coming, and then begins to beat the men's servants and maid servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. For everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 4, beginning in verse 2, Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. There was once a bridge which spanned a large river. During most of the day, the bridge sat with its length running up and down the river, paralleled with the banks, allowing ships to pass through freely on both sides of the bridge. But at certain times each day, a train would come along, and the bridge would be turned sideways across the river, allowing a train to cross it. A switchman sat in a small shack on one side of the river where he operated the controls to turn the bridge and lock it into place as the train crossed. One evening as the switchman was waiting for the last train of the day to come, he looked off into the distance through the dimming twilight and caught sight of the train lights. He stepped to the control and waited until the train was within a prescribed distance when he was to turn the bridge. He turned the bridge into position, but to his horror, he found the locking control did not work. If the bridge was not securely in position, it would wobble back and forth at the ends when the train came onto it, causing the train to jump the track and go crashing into the river. This would be a passenger train with many people aboard. He left the bridge turned across the river and hurried across the bridge to the other side of the river where there was a lever switch he could hold to operate the lock manually. He would have to hold the lever back firmly as the train crossed. He could hear the rumble of the train now, and he took hold of the lever and leaned back to apply his weight to it, locking the bridge. He kept applying the pressure to keep the mechanism locked. Many lives depended on this man's strength. Then, coming across the bridge from the direction of his, his control shack, he heard a sound that made his blood run cold. Daddy, where are you? His four-year-old son was crossing the bridge to look for him. His first impulse was to cry out to the child, run, run, but the train was too close. The tiny legs would never make it across the bridge in time. 
The man almost left his lever to run and snatch up his son and carry him to safety. But he realized that he could not get back to the lever. Either the people on the train or his little son must die. He took a moment to make his decision. The train sped safely and swiftly on its way, and no one aboard was even aware of the tiny broken body thrown mercil mercilessly into the river by the onrushing train. Nor were they aware of the pitiful figure of the sobbing man still clinging tightly to the locking lever long after the train had passed. They did not see him walking home more slowly than he had ever walked to tell his wife how their son had brutally died. Now if you comprehend the emotions which, which went through this man's heart, you can begin to understand the feelings of our Father in Heaven when he sacrificed his son to bridge the gap between us in eternal life. Can there be any wonder that he caused the earth to tremble and the skies to darken when his son died? How does he feel when we speed along through life without giving a thought to what was done for us through Messiah Yeshua? How does he feel when we are not faithful? And that, my friends, is today's rant. The rabbi's rant is often harvested from the teaching archives available to you through our website at www.ianbn.com. There you'll have access to over 10 years of teaching, 700 hours of audio and video teachings ranging from the Jewish roots and heritage, the harmony of the Gospels, the Torah studies, and all of the Prophecy in the News videos and teaching series. Visit the website www.inbn.com and click on Teaching Archives and subscribe for just $5 a month. You'll also find our upcoming events, Passover Seders, and speaking engagements along with guests who will be on our program. If you have comments or questions for this program, please feel free to email us at info at We'll be right back.